Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasha Welich. Welcome. King Charles III has sworn to serve the people of the Commonwealth in his first declaration after formally being proclaimed sovereign. At the Ascension Council, a formal ceremony which took place in London this past Saturday evening, he also promised to protect Church of Scotland. That means that King Charles basically promised to protect Protestantism. He has officially succeeded his mother and he declared he'll protect Protestantism and signed a declaration to do so, though he is more ecumenical interfaith than his statement suggests. Well, we recently, that is this past Thursday, we posted a list of succession from King David of ancient Israel all the way to King Charles III. You'll find that under the title, King Charles announces that Queen Elizabeth II is dead. However, on the other hand, I want to draw your attention that if you would uh, Google, if you would uh, uh, type in Google research uh, uh, genealogy of Queen Elizabeth, you would find exactly that she is a direct descendant of King David. Also, interesting enough that King Charles, not King Charles, uh, when he was prince, during his prince investiture in 1969, he won the crown of throne of, of thorns. And it's interesting that the designer of the crown, which he won, which King Charles won at that time when he was a prince, uh, of the crown which was used uh, at his recent investiture admits, the, uh, the designer of the crown admits that the crown resembles Christ's crown of thorns. The London Daily Mail printed an interesting article in which it revealed this interesting fact, and here is the quote, Even its designer, Mr. Louis Osman, concedes there is a hint of the crown of thorns in the coronet which will crown Prince Charles, Prince of Wales, next week. This was published in Daily Mail, June 25th, 1969. Uh, then the article continues, In the intertwining shapes there is a suggestion of the humblest of all crowns, the crown of thorns, said its designer, Mr. Osman. Is it mere coincidence, dear friends, or is it by providence that Prince Charles' investiture crown was modeled in such a way as to resemble the crown of thorns? Well, if you notice the mock coronation ceremony on the eve of Christ's death, we see in Matthew 27, verse 28 and 29, that they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed symbolizing a ruler's staff or a scepter in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail King of the Jews. Now notice these important points. They knew Christ said he was born to be a king. Christ was in fact a direct descendant of the royal line of the house of David. The scarlet robe, the crown of thorns and the reed or scepter were all given to Christ to mock him because they knew he claimed he was born to be a king, a king of the Jews. Even his su superscription written on the cross had these words on it, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. You find it in verse 37. So is it a merely coincidence that Prince Charles' crown was made to resemble the crown of thorns? It is most interesting that the one who was mocked by being given a crown of thorns nearly 2,000 years ago, uh, or more actually the, uh, than 2,000 years ago, he will soon succeed Prince Charles or whoever uh, will be sitting on the throne at that time, and he will sit upon that very throne of David which Prince Charles as the heir apparent is now occupying. There can be no doubt that the present royal family of Britain are the direct descendants of the ancient Jewish king David and that Queen Elizabeth, which passed last week, sits or seated actually upon the very throne of David. And that one day, now it has come, that there will be very soon another crowning and perhaps the last in this age, who knows, on this throne before the Messiah comes and takes over the very throne which he was born to occupy, the throne of his earthly father, David. Jesus Christ, dear friends, will return to this earth in supernatural power and glory to sit upon the throne of David and to rule all nations from Jerusalem, which is written in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31 and 32. Now, while the description of the coronation crown can be debated, uh, King Charles, if he survives into the Great Tribulation, he looks to personally have a prophetic role, which is described in the book of Hosea, chapter 7, verse 11 and 12. 
Now, a book is being prepared by Dr. Bob Thiel that will deal exactly with the British throne and the throne of David. And in that book, you will be reading very soon, and it will be published next year, that the throne of David was to continue. Because in First Kings 2, verse 45, King Solomon shall be blessed, God said, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. In Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 2, Hear the word of the Lord, O King of Judah, you who sit on the throne of David, you and your servants and your people who enter these gates. So this is, you know, back in the in the Old, uh, Old Testament. So these passages, as well as the one in Jeremiah 33 verses 17 and 18, they make clear that the throne of David was to last. Since scripture cannot be broken, as we know from John 10 35, then someone has to be on that throne now. We also need to state that, yes, there have been Levites ever since Jeremiah, uh, from the same passage, Jeremiah 33, verse 17 and 18. The fact that they do not do their original biblical role for offering does not change the fact that they still exist, which is all that scripture requires of them. Also remember in Genesis 49, verse 10, when Jacob summoned his sons before his death, he said to his son Judah, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people, or the gathering of the people, as it says in some translations. Well, dear friends, this, if until Shiloh comes, means Jesus' first coming, as many have wrongly asserted, then... Where, where were the kings between Zedekiah, the last Jewish king, and Jesus Christ? Furthermore, during his first coming, Jesus said his kingdom was future. He said in John 18, verse 36, so he did not assume the throne then. Furthermore, Genesis 49, 10 has to be a reference to the second coming of Jesus, as we did not see the obedience of the people given to him during his first coming. Hence, biblically, There needs to be a royal succession from Judah all the way through to Jesus Christ's return. So the scripture is plainly teaching that someone has had to have been on that throne since the time of Zedekiah, a contemporary of Jeremiah the prophet, who was the last king of Judah in the Holy Land until Jesus coming to set up the millennial kingdom. Uh, So since someone had to fill that regal role, we can see through historical records and legends that the royalty in the Britain, British Isle indeed fits this. You'll see uh, for yourself, to save some time, in Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 and 13, what the prophet Nathan said to God, uh, what he said to King David, and the promise that God made to King David. And also in Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 16, he says, And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. So this is the throne, friends, that Jesus will return to. The idea that Jesus would return to the throne of David is not a 19th, 20th, or 21st century invention, not at all. The throne of David doctrine is also taught in the New Testament. Have you ever noticed in the Gospel of Luke, when Gabriel came to Mary and he told her in verse 31 that she would give a birth to a child named Jesus. And in verse uh, Luke 1, 20, uh, 32 says that Jesus, he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Also notice Matthew 19 and verse 28. Matthew 19, verse 28, which says, So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Notice, please, that these are still future prophecies. Jesus is not now on the throne of David, and he will not be until the coming millennial kingdom of God. Therefore, until Jesus returns, someone needs to be on the throne, and the British royal family has an occupant to this day. Now we have King Charles III who occupies that throne. Now, is it possible that there is a connection between the British royal family and a daughter of a Judean king and the prophet Jeremiah? Yes, there is, because in this, in some explanation, we find that uh, early possession of Ireland was belonging to Philistines or Phoenicians, and on this point, the old as well as the new historians generally agree, but there was another early settlement in the north of Ireland, so Northern Ireland today, whom the historians called Tuacha de Danan, which simply means the folks of the tribe of Dan. They introduced into the Irish language hundreds of Hebrew words with many customs and legends of the Hebrews. 
and uh, God promised to Israel as a people and a kingdom such preeminence in origin, power and growth. And the answer then is simple and plain uh, uh, and very plain in our sight. Uh, uh, it's simple and plain. England as representing the lost tribes of Israel and Queen Victoria being a direct descendant from David. For she came of James the sixth of Scotland. He from Bruce and Duncan and Malcolm and Kenneth and Kenneth through the kings of Argyllshire, Alpin and Donald and Fergus. Then through the long line of Irish kings from Earka to Heremon of Tara. And he married Tamara Tefi, the daughter of the king, last Jewish king, Sedekiah, who through Jeremiah, the prophet, had been hid from the destroying vengeance of Nebuchadnezzar, the, I mean, the princess Tamara, the daughter of the last king, Sedekiah. The last king, Sedekiah, was uh, basically drawn, uh, was taken into captivity by the Babylonians. However, his younger daughter, Tamara Tefi, was rescued by uh, Jeremiah, and he brought her to Northern Ireland indeed. And uh, her brothers were killed, and all of her kindred was killed, and her father's eyes were put out, and his, her father was took, as I said, captive to Babylon where he died. You see, friends, God had promised to Jeremiah his life wherever he went. This is in Jeremiah 14, verse 5. And I'm just giving you a brief summary of all of that. Now, various other more detailed information you can find on the internet. We don't have time to cover all that. But the problem is, is that the north, the, the, the thing is that the north of Ireland had been settled with the tribe of Dan. And they at once understood who their visitor was when Jeremiah arrived to that island. They called him Olam Fodla, meaning a divine man or teacher. The princess was called Thea, Tefi, the beautiful one from the east. This princess, of course, as I mentioned, the daughter of the last king, Jewish king, Sedekiah, she was married to Heremon of Ulster, the king of Lothar Crofin, for such was the name of the city of Tara. This word Tara is Arat, spelled backward. The Hebrew read from right to left, English left to right. Lothar Crofin was changed into Tara at the time of the wedding. Tara means law, like Torah in Hebrew, you see. Thus began the seed of David to take root again, and from there it spread over all Ireland, then to Scotland, then to England, and Jacob's stone in Westminster Abbey marks the journey of David's throne and has always been kept with the seed, and they have been always crowned on it. And indeed, for the coronation ceremony, the uh, stone of scone or the stone of destiny that is now located in Scotland will be transported to London for the coron for the occasion of the coronation uh, coronation ceremony. So we will see that with our own eyes, dear friends, and uh, hopefully uh, I shall re I shall remind you of that and give you some more details on my YouTube channel, which is youtubecom slash c slash Alexander Velchik, and you can it's called Biblical History. And also the Continuing Church of God, of which I'm eld an elder, will be publishing more materials on this. So you'll be able to read it on internet. So in Ireland, you see Northern Ireland, Olam Fodla, which means a divine teacher. The name or title is in Hebrew. And this man, Jeremiah, as it says in the history, founded a college to train students to teach and preach his religion. It was called Mur Olam, School of the Divine. And here again, the name is Hebrew, although in Irish. This wonderful man had with him this very young princess, and she, met, uh, and she married the uh, Irish Irish prince Eochaid Heremon, and then that's how the royal seed of David continued to exist. And our text, the Bible, tells us that Jeremiah was to plant and to build up. Here he planted, and here he did build. He planted and built a throne, a college, and religion. That's something that we should all know and be aware of. Dear friends, there's some more I I information about how then Irish history took turn after the arrival of Olam Fodlak, uh, of the prophet Jeremiah, and um, in some series of our, uh, in series of my uh, lectures on my channel, YouTube channel, Biblical History, and also on our website and on our BibleNewsProphecy.net, you shall find some more world analysis and more amazing and interesting Bible prophecies and how they have been and are being fulfilled in our day and age. My name is Alexander Sashavedi. This was Bible News Prophecy. Until next time, goodbye, friends.